Greetings, Light Tribe Janine Palmer here, Spirit Silver Moon, Harmony, Harmony Energy Healing Sacred Sessions. Uh, and the video today is <laughs> about how animals are similar to us. Um, so, in other words, there's things that we don't know that any being has experienced, whether human or animal, okay? Um, and so we might see a behavior and we don't understand it. So we judge it or we think something falsely about them. And so I'm going to use a little story. <laughs> okay. Little things flying around. Um, little story about I work at a horse ranch cleaning stalls. And I love to be around the horses and their energy and the oak trees. And um, it's good exercise. I've been doing it off and on for a while. Anyway, you get to know the personalities of the horses, kind of their behaviors. And we don't know what they've been through. You know what I mean? The horses come to this ranch that are rescues probably. And um, we don't know what any being has been through. So some of them have such a, well, they, they're all beautiful energy. But I mean, some of them have like a really uh, lovely, nurturing, kind, accepting energy. I mean, I almost can't even describe it. Like they'll just come up to you and they're just so accepting and their energy is healing. It's very beautiful. And other ones are more standoffish. Maybe they're afraid or skittish or whatever, but maybe they're still interested. Maybe they'll still be brave and stick their nose out and let you touch them. Um, but this story is about, there's a, there's a foal there. It's a, not even a yearling, probably a filly. And I hadn't seen, I saw, I saw her once when she was a baby. I hadn't seen her while I knew her mom. Her mom was a big black thoroughbred, very tall. And she was fun and quirky. When I would clean her stall, she would straddle my barrow. I mean, it's a huge wheelbarrow and she would straddle it. She was so funny. Um, anyway, she had twins and one of them died. I think it was a boy that died. So it was just the mom and the baby girl. And then I heard that the mom colicked and died, right? So I go out there the other day and she's out in an outside pen and I knew who she was. And um, she loves her owner. I saw her come up to her owner, but she's, she, she might be curious, but she's very standoffish. Like um, she won't come up to you, you know? And so someone might look at that horse and think, oh, that it's unsociable or I don't know, some have a, a personality that's, like I said, outgoing and accepting, and some have a reserved, or they seem like they don't even have a personality because they're not engaging, okay? And I'm thinking, I know who you are. I knew your mom. Um, and I'm thinking how this little filly lost her twin brother and then her mother. And so we don't know. It's proven. You see how animals... Um, mourn each other, all kinds of animals, elephants, um, just because they can't speak to us in a language that we understand doesn't mean that they don't feel or that they aren't affected by loss, whatever, trauma, abuse, neglect. Okay, that doesn't mean that they aren't affected. So, you know, we might, somebody might come and know nothing about that horse and think, oh, that horse is a bitch. Really? Well, did you know that horse lost her brother and her mother? And she's not even a year old? You know what I mean? I'm using the horse as an example. So a lot of people see a behavior and they judge it. Now, um, again, everybody's been through wounding. If you're here in earth school, you know, you've experienced some shit. So people lose a parent or parents. Um, some people are neglected as a child and they're adopted and they have issues. Uh, some people lose siblings, best friends, mm, homes, all kinds of things are lost. It feels like they were taken from us. Okay. And things challenge us in this life in ways we don't understand. And some people find ways to, um, 
move beyond it, to rise above, to be a spokesperson, to be a healer, to be a helper because of what they've experienced, right? So, so like if someone has lost those things as a, at a young age and it's affected them, that doesn't give them a license to be a dick, however. Okay, but this is the re part of the reason they do behave the way they do because that wounded child is not healed. Okay, so you see the behavior patterns coming out. So you can have that understanding for that. You can say, okay, I understand why this person is being so horrible. Okay, but I don't have to allow it into my space. Um, and then, again, when we see people uh, behaving like this, we don't need to be triggered. I, I think I'll just make a long video. I was going to do two videos, so I think I'll just make a long one. Um, and here I am without a men's t-shirt and a baseball hat. So <laughs> don't look like such a hobo, hobo, hopefully, in this one. So the next thing I want to talk about is how we might um, share things, right, from compassion or beliefs, okay, that people don't want don't need, aren't ready for. So some people want to share, some people, yeah, they want to share different um, messages, experiences, stories, and those might be helpful to people. Um, it might be very helpful to people. And it's, you know, especially if you're not trying to sell somebody something, you know what I mean? But like um, some people want, because of their belief system, they want people, other people to find Jesus, to find Christ, to be saved. Okay. Because that's their perception of something or what they were taught. Um, and other people might not want to hear that. And some people get really repelled. They don't like scripture thrown at them because it doesn't have the same meaning to them. People are at different levels of spiritual, uh, awakening, awareness, unfolding, development, whatever. Um, and there are many paths up the mountain. So sometimes someone means well to do that because they think they're being helpful. Um, and it's okay if someone doesn't accept it. And similarly, like I've had experiences where like I share information about uh, herbs and vitamins for healing, natural healing, because some people don't like big pharma. They don't want to take man-made chemical drugs. And I get that. Um, I'm that way to a degree. And I feel like, you know, if you can stay away from that stuff, that's great. But like, if there comes a time that you need it, that's okay too. Um, but some people get addicted to it. So some people think it's okay to be addicted to alcohol, uh, or pot, but that they can't take, you know, ibuprofen. So I offer, I've done a lot of studying for herbs and uh, vitamins and stuff. And, um, turmeric is a very good herb for inflammation, uh, fights Alzheimer's, fights cancer, does many, many, many things that are healthful, you know, very popular in India, as most people know. Um, and sometimes if people are healing from surgeries or inflammation of something, they have something sore, I, I tell people about that. And so I shared that information because sometimes I know people, you know, want more natural stuff. And I do it because I care. In, in other words, um, this might be helpful. I'll tell you about it, right? And then sometimes people just slam me to the ground. Like, nope, I'm not taking those pills. Okay, it's an herb. It's a root. And it's ground into powder and put in capsules. Okay, so it's not like drugs. It's, uh, you know, God put certain things on this earth uh, to help us to heal. And some people don't know about certain things that might be helpful to them. So we can share that information. If they don't want it, they don't want it. Okay, but sometimes people's reactions are so severe and extreme and so resistant that it almost seems uh, arrogant and disrespectful. Right? And you think, holy shit, you know... Um, and then, you know, that's where we get to decide how we are going to react to that. It's like someone is so staunch that they just do not want to hear it. And it's the same thing with so many messengers um, on the planet throughout history, known and unknown, masters, teachers, who came to share a message that some people weren't ready to hear. Attack the messenger, think they're whacked out, whatever. Uh, some people just aren't ready for certain things, and that's okay. Um, so, you know, we have stories. We can share our stories, what we learn from our stories, different perspectives, but uh, we're not our stories, and hopefully we shouldn't stay too stuck to our stories, but we can share what we learn from them, which might be helpful to others. Um, so yeah, this is just a story about how, uh, what I noticed with that little horse, and uh, wanting to share the similarities, uh, if that's at all helpful to anyone. And again, um, we can share things that we feel strongly about, but not everybody's going to hear 
us. They're not going to understand it the way we do. And that's okay. And so when someone seems extremely rude to you, um, you know, we don't know what space they're coming from. And um, our first trigger might be feeling a little bit of offended, but if you can rise out of that, like to say, you know what, I don't need to be offended by that behavior. Um, you know, when you try to do something nice or something kind or from compassion and someone shuts you down, it's okay. It's not okay to let people disrespect you, but what I mean is some people aren't going to want to hear you. And that's okay. But it's not okay to let people dishonor you and disrespect you. And we should, we are a voice, we have a voice, and we should um, feel that it's okay and give ourselves permission to stand up for ourselves uh, if and when it's necessary and to communicate. Peace.